Once upon a time, there was a four-year-old girl named Sarah that hated mealtimes. Every day, her mother would short order cook her a separate meal from the rest of her family. And if Sarah wasn't given her meal of choice, then every bite would be an absolute fight. Until one day, her mother was fed up with all the mealtime fighting, and because of that, she saw a dietitian here at BCNH and learned about the division of responsibility for feeding children. If this story sounds all too familiar to you, then listen up. My name is Cassie Christopher, and I'm going to share with you the division of responsibility for feeding children. This model was developed by Ellen Satter, a registered dietitian nutritionist and family therapist. The division of responsibility clearly solves mealtime feeding struggles, excuse me, solves mealtime feeding struggles by clearly identifying which parts of feeding parents are responsible for and those that are the responsibility of children. Feeding children with the respect to the division of responsibility works. It has been shown to work with picky eaters, those who have high body weights, children with special needs, and others, from newborns to high school graduates. And now that you're salivating at the thought of peaceful mealtimes, here's what you need to know. Parents are responsible for the what, when, and where of feeding. And kids are responsible for how much and whether. Yes, you heard me say that your kids are the ones who determine how much they eat and whether they eat at all. So the old clean your plate mentality just doesn't fit here. But how can you be sure that your kids are getting enough to eat if they're the ones who call the shots? Children have the ability to regulate how much they eat based on what they need to grow. Simply put, your kids will eat when they're hungry and they won't when they're not. And whatever amount that is, it's enough for proper growth and development. Consider the following studies on appetite regulation in kids. Lean Birch and colleagues, excuse me, Leanne Birch and colleagues, fed preschoolers either low calorie or high calorie beverages and then allowed them to eat as much food as they wanted. The preschoolers who were fed the low calorie beverages ate significantly more calories following the, the meal. This shows that kids are able to alter their nutrient intake depending on their needs. So we know kids will get enough to eat, but what do you do if your kids will only eat the same five foods? The research tells us that repeated neutral exposure is key. A child may have to taste a new food 10, 15, or even 20 times before it is accepted. That may sound like a lot, the research also tells us that parents normally give up somewhere around three. Neutrality is really important as well. When a child doesn't feel pressure to eat, their innate curiosity is more likely to shine. So kids are responsible for how much and whether to eat, and parents are responsible for the what, when, and where of eating. So parents are responsible for what? Parents can make their families nutritious meals without exclusively catering to the needs of their picky eater. Satter recommends having at least one food on the table that the child usually enjoys. Breads, rice, pastas, or other starches are all good options here. The research also shows that children are more likely to accept foods when they eat them in a pleasant environment. So parents can make mealtime snacks by avoiding touchy subjects like bad grades, or pressuring children to eat. So parents are also responsible for when. Have a consistent schedule for mealtimes and snacks. To ensure that children are hungry when it's time to eat, avoid foods like food and beverages, excuse me, between these meals and snacks, with the exception of water. This principle eliminates grazing, or what Sada <coughs> refers to as panhandling. Since children don't seem to panhandle for broccoli, but instead things like candy, you can make sure that there's room for these nutritious options offered at mealtimes by avoiding the grazing or the panhandling. Parents are also responsible for where. Sauter recommends that all meals and snacks be consumed at the table with others. Sticking to the table allows children to focus on their hunger signal. The benefits of eating as a family are numerous. Studies have shown that when kids eat with their parents, 
They have a lesser um, likelihood of drug use, they have better grades, and are just generally happier children. Now let's check back in with Sarah. Because of her mother's discovery of the division of responsibility, Sarah was served meals and snacks at the table with the rest of her family. Sarah's mom did not make Sarah a separate meal, although she did make sure there was part of the meal that Sarah would enjoy. And finally, Sarah became curious about the other foods on the table when she wasn't pressured to eat anything. And ever since that day, Sarah has tasted a few new foods and even discovered she likes carrots. Sarah's mother can relax and enjoy dinner with her, the rest of her family without a fight. So in conclusion, the division of responsibility worked for Sarah and it can work for your family. Just remember that parents are responsible for what, when, and where kids eat and the kids are responsible for how much and whether they eat at all. When you put these principles into place, you just may be surprised at the new foods that your child is willing to try. For more information, you can check out one of Satter's books, which we've got a few of them up here, like Child of Mine, or come see us here at the Vaster Center for Natural Health for a more individualized approach. Thank you.